I'm really, if I never got below 205 again, if I never got, if I went back up to 210 and never got below 210 again for the rest of my life, I, I, I couldn't be more happy. I, I am very satisfied. If I have to live with this, you know, if I never have plastic surgery and have loose, this loose skin on my stomach that hangs down like an apron, and I'll give you a, a, a shot of that in a few minutes, my life is, is so much better that it's, it's more than I ever expected. Uh, another big topic I see is, is dealing with stalls. I have never found the secret to breaking a stall. I would freak out every time I would go into a stall because it seemed like every, starting after the third week post-op, you know, I hit, my first, I hit the famous three-week stall and was stuck there for a, a week or so, maybe longer, I can't recall. It, but it seemed like every, every month I would stall out for a week. I'd lose weight consistently, a couple pounds here, a couple pounds there. Then for a week, I'd go into a stall. Sometimes it would be two weeks, three weeks, I'd go into a stall. I kind of think it was um, the kinds of foods I was eating. You know, I was experimenting a whole lot. Uh, I would up the amount of, of refried beans versus uh, lean meat in my Mexican food dish that I was eating during that time period, that first six months. You know, sometimes I would put in a pound of ham, uh, a pound of ground hamburger, turkey hamburger, and I'd put in a pound of uh, refried beans. Sometimes I put in two pounds of refried beans to one pound of hamburger, and, and just try different different things to see how what I liked. So I really think much of it had to do with the amount of carbohydrates, even though they were good carbohydrates, they were low glycemic carbohydrates. They still were carbohydrates, and carbs just seemed to stall my weight loss. So, but I, the one thing I did learn after all those those stalls over, you know, the six or eight, ten stalls, I still get stalls, but I've quit really paying attention to them. The one main takeaway is if the things you were doing before the stall hit were working for you and you were losing weight, stick with it. Don't mess with your system. Don't try to change things up because I found that it, it didn't help. And I didn't, you know, with no, no way of determining what was actually uh, working because I would suddenly start losing weight again. So just be patient. Stick with your food and diet plan. Exercise whatever you're doing. And if it worked before, it will work again. Just stick with it. Be patient. Uh, weight loss is not a, a straight curve down. When you're losing, your body is going to react to the, the, the decrease in calories. It's going to think it's starving at some point, And it's going to start trying to hang on to everything. You know, so much is depending on how much water you're taking in, how much salt you're taking in, whether the food is as close to being normal uh, from the source, like, you know, eating eating a turkey hamburger versus eating a processed turkey deli meat. You know, you don't know what they put in there. You don't know what kind of salts they put in there, what kind of sodium, sugars, whatever. You don't know. All you see is what's on the label. But but you don't know how your body's going to react to it. So there, there's so many things that go into how your body reacts to foods that if you've got a plan that's working for you, just stick with it. Try to be patient. I know it's frustrating as hell when you're, you're, you're losing weight and all of a sudden you just stop and you don't know why. So please just hang in there. Don't play with your, with your system or your diet. Getting on to excess skin, uh, I really held all my weight in my stomach. I had, you know, some... When I got to 375, you know, I really noticed there was fat on my, even on my back, a, a thick a layer of fat. So my back is kind of like I've got a skin suit on now. It's kind of droopy. Uh, I didn't think I stored a whole lot of fat in my arms, but I did do actually have the, the bat wings now under my arms. So uh, on my thighs, didn't really store a whole lot of fat on my thighs. I do have some loose skin, but it's it's negligible. Can't really notice it unless I'm looking for it because it's on the back of my thighs. But when I sit down, I can see the, the kind of the, the roll to the inside of my thighs being pushed up from the chair. It's really no big deal. I don't know if I'll ever have any plastic surgeries. I'm, I'm so happy with the way I am now. Couldn't be more satisfied. Loose skin and all. I would rather be... I'd rather have loose skin like this and have it flapping around than being tight and fat. It's just, there's just no difference. One of the toughest things with the, the weight loss was 
sleeping on my side. I'm a side sleeper, and when I lost the, the fat in my knees and thighs, now my knees hurt when I lay them on top of each other, so I got to sleep with a comforter or some type of cushion between my knees at night. My hip bones kind of get pressure points on them. For, they did for a while anyway. It's kind of, I guess I've adjusted to it now, but I, I had one of those memory foam mattresses. I had it before surgery, but I would still get these pressure points on my hip bones from like when I was laying on my side, and I, I'd wake up at night with a with pain in my hips and have to turn over. Other than that, I really don't have any any other thing I can really think of to mention. Uh, overeating now versus uh, pre-surgery. Like I said before, I would have. Uh, food anxieties about not having enough food, and I would, I always, I always felt like I, I was afraid of not having enough food to eat. Uh, maybe something from, from a previous life. Maybe I starved to death in a previous life, and that's carrying over. I had anxieties because I couldn't figure out why I I couldn't stop eating. You know, until I was just over full, not just full, but over full to the point of, of bursting sometimes. Uh, the feelings of a uh, of uh, shame and and guilt about eating. Uh, cake or ice cream, anything that wasn't healthy in front of people, you know, I was always feeling like I, I was being judged. The sleeve just gave me control over that. Like I said, my head hunger went away. Don't really feel stomach hunger anymore. You know, I can, I know I'm hungry because my stomach is, is kind of in knots and I feel a little bit of a stabbing pain, so I know I'm, I'm hungry that way. Now I feel like I've overeaten if I've eaten an extra apple for the day. You know, it's like, that's crazy. You, you know, you it's like, you ate an apple, you ate too much for the day. It's like, <laughs> man, that's crazy. But I try to keep it in perspective. Before, like I said, uh, overeating for me would have been if I'd been able to cram in eight slices of pizza after I've eaten, you know, eaten those two extra slices. Normally, normal meal was six slices. Eight slices was overeating for me. Eating a pound of pasta with hamburger pasta sauce, to me that was overeating, you know, a normal eating three to four portions of pasta for a normal person. Now I feel like I've overeaten if I eat more than a cup to a cup and a half of pasta. That's my cutoff point. It's like, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get hung cravings if you eat more than that. And in pasta for me is another thing where I like the flavor but I know it's empty calories and I still try to get as much nutrition from all my food. I I I have no doubts that I can I will never go back to being overweight again. Uh, the, the, I, at first, you know, I was, my pre-surgery thoughts were on the anxieties of, you know, what if I, if I lose weight and then gain it back? I have, after, after the first year, I knew that I would never be able to go back. I wouldn't have to go back. I, I, I was in complete control of my eating. So I don't even have any, any anxieties about that anymore. If I want to lose weight, I'm in control. I can just cut back a little bit on my food. My weight goes down or I exercise a little more, walk a little more. It, it's, it's what I have always thought it felt like to be one of those people who were normal sized. You know, you know the people at work, they say, oh, I, oh I, I forgot to eat today. It's like, what's wrong with you? You forgot to eat. I don't think about not eating. <laughs> I, I never could understand people could not, not be aware that they didn't eat for the whole day. Uh, I'm not one of those people now, but I know where they're coming from, and I know that feeling of being in control. I can take food or take or leave it. I don't have to have it. I had a guy at work yesterday, uh, a new a new employee who was talking with me, and he's he's like six foot two, six foot three, skinny as a rail, probably weighs 145 pounds, and he he wanted he had heard there was some there was a giant cookie cake in the in the kitchen, and he wanted a piece. But he knew that I had lost all this weight. He's like, oh, I don't want to eat this in front of you. I said, don't worry about it. I, I could care less. I have no desire to eat that cookie whatsoever. It doesn't appeal to me at all. I have no, no cravings. I don't have any weaknesses for that kind of stuff. And I didn't tell him it was, if it had been a donut, then I might have been tempted. And I might have ate one with him. But, but I still could have taken it or leave it. I was, for, you know, at that point, or at that this particular day that I didn't have that, that kind of craving. So I could have taken or leaving a, a donut. Some of the other things, like when I was, uh, during my, my six months, one year losing period, 
you know, I would get freaked out if I gained back a pound or two. You know, you just, I would just randomly gain back a couple pounds even though that my diet and exercise hadn't really changed. Now if I gain back five or ten pounds, I don't freak out about it. I know that I'm in control. I know what to do to get the weight back off. Just go back on my plan. Go back to work on it. I let myself slip up sometimes and slide, go back into old habits. I know what I have to do. It's not out of control. And you'll have that same kind of control. And moving on to uh, things like personality changes. My, in my first 46 years, I was always a very introverted person. I wanted to avoid the spotlight. Didn't want to be noticed at work. Didn't want to be noticed at school. You know, I had a lot of people who, who picked on me and bullied me for being overweight my whole, you know, during my school years. So I just learned to keep my head down, try not to be noticed, I blend into the crowd. Uh, as you can see, I'm on YouTube now. <laughs> it's like, it's like once I started losing the weight and started feeling better about myself and the way I looked, I had a need to express my personality. I have always been what I consider a closet comedian. I've always admired people who could make people laugh. Some of my favorite comedians were Richard Pryor, Cheech and Chong, uh, Ralphie May, Robert Schimmel, uh, I'd already mentioned Bill Hicks, Chris Rock. I mean, I, I love those people who could look at life, look at the absurdities of life, and say it in such a way that it made you laugh but made you think at the same time. Like a, one of my favorite things that Ralphie May had said was he was so big that he said, this is way past a Diet Coke fix, you know, and that's where I was too. I could really identify with him. Now I have a need, I have a need now to, to be more expressive. I, I, I want to get out and go and, you know, join groups of uh, people that have the same interests as me. I, I want to go out and socialize. I want to go to like locally, uh, the art, the art classes, they have a thing called painting with a twist here where they set you up with everything you need except, except for your drinks. You bring your own wine or, or drinks to, and it's kind of a party atmosphere where they all sit around and they all, everybody paints the same picture. Joined my local computer club and actually stood up in front of people and given presentations over, over things that I thought might interest them and how to take advantage of technology. I mean, I guess that's all I have to say about that. I just feel the need to, to share what I've learned and, and make people's, I call this an adventure. I, I'm so burned out on the word journey. <laughs> I had a lady come to one of my classes at, when I was going to college and and they were in a t-shirt business and this and she was kind of a, a a hippie chick but she was actually a West End Wanda and here in Texas a West End Wanda is a lady who is married to a rich man but so she doesn't have to do anything except her hair and nails and whatever whatever she wants to do and so she's also kind of a, a social active per, a socially active person and uh, hopefully no one takes offense at that <laughs> It's just kind of, of silly. And this lady was talking about this t-shirt business and how they, it was a call to her passion. And, and she's on this life journey. She's always on this life journey. And it's called to, called to be on this exciting journey. And it's like, lady, you've got no troubles in life. You know, you have more money than you're ever going to need. You're driving a big SUV. Please, qu please just quit calling it a journey. You're not, you're not changing lives you're in Rwanda. You're not feeding the poor. You're, you're making t-shirts and overpriced t-shirts at that. <laughs> so please, nobody take offense being called a West End Wanda or relating to that. It's just, I was just trying to point out the, uh, the I guess, my own, my own insight into the absurdities of life. So, so just call it an adventure from now on, please. Let's, let's, let's own that word. Oh, it's now an adventure. It's a weight loss surgery adventure. Some of the other things, uh, constipation, heartburn, all that really kind of sorted itself after sorted itself out for it for me after the first year. I uh, went through a, the, the the phases everybody goes through. Uh, the first three or four months, every night I had heartburn when I'd lay down. I'd have heartburn during the daytime. I never took anything for it. I just I'm one of those kind of people who just I, I don't like the thought of taking any kind of medications. That's just my own personal uh, viewpoint. I'm very very. Uh, I really believe in survival of the fittest. I believe my body should be able to handle the situation and or learn to live with it 
without outside uh, intervention. My only exception to that is if, like extreme pain, you know, that's the one thing I will have as a caveat. If I'm in too much pain, then I will take pain medications, but very limited amounts. Uh, so I went through the heartburn phase, never took any kind of anti-digestion medications. Went through the next phase of, you know, after all those basically living on purees and liquids for so long, went through the, through the, uh, the diarrhea phase. You know, you learn real quickly during that first month. Never trust a fart. Live by that saying. Write it down in your refrigerator. Post it on your monitor, on your computer. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> Never trust a fart. Don't even, don't even try. Don't even attempt a one cheek sneak. Don't do it. I'm telling you, because <laughs> you'll get away with it three, three out of four times, and that fourth time you'll, uh oh, you feel, you feel more than air come out. You know. So, I've had that happen a couple times. Fortunately, you know, it, it was just, just a little teeny spot. You know. <laughs> so, Personal convention. Hi, my name's Randy, and I and I, I shit my underwear one time. Hi, Randy. 